On the spot news media, we got the latest news. We don't care about the views, we just represent it right. Put local news internationally every night. On the spot, wave that Jamaican flag from left to right. Let's get it right, y'all know the type. We ain't dealing with the hype. We make it take flight. Yeah, man, my viewers and subscribers, what a guan. A blessed and a wonderful Tuesday morning to each and every person out there tuning into on the spot news media. Now, my peeps, I don't know how we do it over on this side each and every morning. We have to give thanks and praise to the Most High Creator for the preservation of life because life is indeed the greatest. So now the morning and my peeps I have a few stories for share with you, the regular members of Chan Public and also members of the diaspora. So please like the video, share the video, watch the entire vlog so you can get a full understanding and a better appreciation of everything we are going in Jamaica. So watch this now my peeps, so we are going to talk about an incident that took place over there in the valley violence prone, crime riddled, St. James Police Division, where a man known as Miman, but I guess I'm woman for calling the name the still, get can up, your yeah, man lose him three pints, courtesy of the old dirty can of boy them over there in Hampton, St. James. So the St. James police have commenced a probe into the knockings and clappings that resulted in the last life of a 33-year-old farmer who lost his life by armed criminal elements just outside his home in Hampton District, St. James. All of this took place on Sunday night. The deceased, as I stated earlier, has since been identified as Kennardo Osborne, otherwise known as Miman. He's of a plum tree address in Hampton, St. James. So reports from the police suggest that sometime around 9.30 p.m., Osborne walked from his house to his car, which was parked outside, and was ambushed by criminal elements who opened fire, hitting him all over the body. The victim's wife, who was inside the house at the time, overheard the knockings and clappings and went outside to investigate. To her surprise, she discovered her husband's lifeless body laying in a pool of blood meters from his Toyota Corolla motor car. He had multiple can up can up wounds all over the upper body and head. The police was summoned upon arrival and the man taken to the hospital where he was pronounced you know what. The police is stating that they have no motive at this time for that brutal knockings and clappings. Poor I may I tell you, Western Jamaica continues. Yeah man. Now over there in the St. Catherine North Police Division we are talking about the Spanish Town area for sure. The police have identified the garden pen double knockings and clappings victim that took place over the weekend. So the police have identified the two men that were found lifeless suffering from multiple can up can up wounds at their home in Garden Pen, Spanish Town, St. Catherine on Saturday. They have since been identified as Devon Mackenzie, otherwise known as Chucky, and a 23-year-old man identified as Rio Robinson. Both half of Bells Avenue in the community of Garden Pen. The double knockings and clappings that resulted in the last life of both men is being investigated by cops attached to the major investigation division. The police is stating that no motive has been established for that double knockings and clappings. So for those who don't know what took place, it was reported that sometime about 3.30 a.m., residents heard loud explosions and called the police. A search was conducted and the bodies of the two men were found on separate beds inside a board dwelling. The men had can up wounds all over their upper bodies and heads. Investigators reportedly recovered more than a dozen spent casing from that scene. So you know for sure, said the man, them deal with the situation there. Grimy. Yeah, man. Now, over there in the St. Catherine South Police Division, the St. Catherine South Police have issued a request for several individuals who they believe can assist with various investigations across the division to report to the Portmore Criminal Investigation Branch, CIB. 
The following persons are being asked to report by midday, Wednesday, August 30 or make a contact to them via telephone by dialing 876-949-8397. Now the persons in question are on your screen presently. Corey Rowe, otherwise known as Rasta Corey. A man known as Keran Hacker, otherwise known as Killer Reds in the streets. A next man known as Odin Hacker, well, seems to be a family member of Keran Hacker, is also wanted by the police. A man known as Andre Simpson, but more popularly known in the criminal underworld as Colafras. A next man known as Odin Brian, otherwise known as Futa. A man known as Kedar Brown. A next man known as Denardo James. And last but definitely not the least, a man known as Paul Yulan, otherwise known as Inaman. Most definitely not the first some of these names have been called and placed on the spot news media and other various social media outlets. So the St. Catherine South Police are reassuring the public that all information will be handled with utmost confidentiality. So persons with information can make an anonymous call by reporting to 311. Yeah man. Or as always, if you don't trust the method there, link on the Spot News Media or any like-minded vlogger and give us the information and we will most definitely pass it on to the relevant authorities who can make effective change. Yeah man, now my peeps, it is with great pleasure to let you know that the police have officially laid formal charges and the woman suspected of taking the life of the young 8-year-old Daniel Rowe. The woman presently on your screen, who has since been identified as Coyote Sachel, has been charged with the abduction and the loss of life of Daniel Rowe. Sachel, who is of a Padmore district address in Red Hill St. Andrew, and Twickenham Park in St. Catherine was picked up and pointed out on an identification parade last week. She has since been in the custody of the police. The young Daniel Rowe was taken from her school in Brayton Primary on the 8th of June 2023 and she was later found with her throat you know what along Roosevelt Avenue in St. Andrew. The child succumbed to injuries in the hospital two days later. DCP Bailey told the country last week that Sachel was an intimate partner of Daniel's father, a police constable known as Noval Rowe. So we're going to hear from the DCP also as he weighs in on that beryllium saga. Yeah, man. The DCP states that the criminal gangs are forming an alliance to commit these crimes. So we're going to hear from the DCP and he also defends the police response time in that beryllium attack. We have all seen the videos and all we have seen is a one police take on the man them. The police, they seemed as if he wasn't on duty, even though they say, rightfully speaking, a police is never off duty. All we saw was a one police, we take on the man, them knock it and clap it, but the one squad there alone couldn't really deal with the situation, as those criminal elements were heavily armed. So, I got to hear from the DCP still, and make him try the fin theme thing. But as I stated earlier, first, he might talk about the alliance that has been formed by criminal elements. So anyway, listen. We have heard about a few of these incidents mm -hmm. and we know that those were what I consider to be organized. 
different gang members, I may use that term, coming together to carry out those, those type of activities. In relation to this one, we are not certain, but all I will say is that we are making progress. I think what we find is that members from different gangs mm. coming together for a specific job, uh, forming like alliances, yes. um, which is which is a, is a little worrisome and troubling. Um, in the previous cases, we have arrested and charged five persons so far. Um, there are three that are directly connected to the incident. The other two, we know that they are involved, but we have not directly linked them to the matter. And that those investigations are still ongoing. We have recovered a number of firearms in those, in that those three other incidents, uh, including iPod weapons. So the investigation is gang activities have evolved over the years. There was a time when it was basically territorial. We, if you can look at the, the, those days when one would be, be associated with certain type of activities, the politics, they have evolved. They have grown out of that. And they are about making money. It's about going after money. So there's no divide in terms of enterprise when they decide to go on mission that will generate funds. So irrespective of which gang, they will join together for that one common cause and they revert to their original position. So it is a little troubling, but we are doing a lot of work, not only in relation to this matter, but there are several other matters that we are focusing on. No, my peeps. Deputy Commissioner of Police in charge of crime, Fitz Bailey, is defending the police's response to Friday's armed knockings and clappings robbery of the beryllium vehicle in Mandeville, Manchester. DCP Bailey stated that a team of police responded to the incident within less than two minutes and engaged the criminals. Now, DCP, with all due respect, we only see a one police take on the criminal them and knock it and clap it. And the one squad there alone, me not feel like him the depth of duty still. Him just a pass and see where I go on. And just take the opportunity for strike back upon these criminal elements. But anyway, we got here where you are still. Yeah, man, listen. Within less than two minutes, the police actually responded. And there was some engagement. In fact, there was an, another police officer who was on duty who actually engaged the, the, the criminal in a, in, a, in, a, in a gunfight. The police cannot be everywhere at the same time. We are not, we are not what I consider to be, um, we can't be omnipresent. Whilst I, whilst I admit that we have a responsibility to, to serve, protect, and reassure, but there are other responsibilities that are required, not just the police being present. So the last thing that we are going to talk about now, my peeps, is a video that has been circulating on social media of two crasmite, two old butterfoot girl. Yeah, man, may I tell you? They were there on that video glorifying and basically bigging up the criminal elements that carried out that brazen daylight robbery over there in Mandeville, Manchester, the beryllium courier vehicle. These two crasmites made certain utterances. I may I tell them, my peeps, it's a shame to see these so called women glorifying these types of criminal acts but i am not surprised because many of what you see taking place in our society is backed by the so-called women so i'll be playing a small clip from the video because the video is filled with expletives coming from their dirty mouth so i'll mute the video and play a edited clip from some of what they said in that nasty video of theirs it's just rather disgusting seeing women in this fashion and the deputy commissioner of police dcp fitz bailey also condemned that act and weighed in on that viral video so listen 
Yes, yes. you got five star general long a man the villain yes, see them. Hurry up, son of a the middle with a black jacket and the look of Aaron Summer show like your other fight. And the one that the green vest that keep a rare pass tight, Maria turn up. DCP Bailey says he has seen several videos where persons are lauding the criminals for unleashing terror on the unsuspecting in the furtherance of their criminal activities. He says that the nation should mourn the fact that women who claim to be mothers are involved in this kind of hero worship of hardened criminals. So we're going to hear again from DCP Fitz Bailey. Listen. It is very sad. I saw some of those TikTok videos and I think especially females, there's one with two females and I think they have descended really really very low when when those these type of activities can be glorified and as you indicated extolled by by people it is very very sad and these are women who claim that they have children it's very very sad it's a very very dark moment for us as a society when women can glorify these type of activities point of correction dcp bailey those all fat where you see a glorify criminal elements in such a way should not be even classified as women because women are supposed to be upstanding people. Those that you saw were a set of crasmites. Yeah, man. So anyway, my peeps, remember to like, share, subscribe to the channel. Stay tuned to Underspot News Media as I continue to bring you fresh news and updates in subsequent newscasts. Underspot News Media. Yeah, man.